Hey everyone, Chris Brule here from Maven Analytics, and today we're going to talk about AI. Specifically, we're going to talk about AI's forgotten superstar, Google. While most of the focus in the AI space has been on ChatGPT, which is a partnership between OpenAI and Microsoft, Google has a very strong AI offering of its own. It's just been a little bit behind the curve in terms of getting it out to the public. But back in December, Google released some very impressive results from its new models. These are branded under the name Gemini. Gemini is a multimodal approach to AI that allows users to submit things like text, image, video, audio. It can even read things like sheet music. We'll take a look at all of the possibilities, but I do want to point out that Google still hasn't released its best versions of these models to the public. So the documents we're going to look at claim very high performance, but unfortunately we won't be able to put those to the test just yet. However, Google has begun embedding some of these capabilities at a lower tier into what was formerly known as BARD, which is rebranded to Gemini. So Gemini now has the ability to intake photos, text, it's also connected to the web in real time, so it does still have some advantages over ChatGPT. That was a lot to say that if you are in the data space and like to use AI for productivity, you should keep an eye on Google's offerings because Although there's been some controversy around its ability to generate images and some of the politics built into its text responses, overall it performs quite well at technical tasks. And if your goal is to get help with something like Python or SQL code, you should definitely keep Google Gemini in your tool belt. Let's go ahead and take a look at its capabilities. Google Gemini was developed by its DeepMind division, which many of you may know as the company that built the algorithm that helped defeat world champions at the game Go. But in terms of capabilities, Gemini was built to be multimodal, reasoning seamlessly across text, images, video, audio, and code. And Google is hyping this up quite a bit as its most capable AI model, and even says that it's better than GPT-4 at many tasks. And if you take a look at this page, which is worth checking out, we can see that there are a number of benchmarks where Gemini Ultra, its most advanced version of this LLM, surpasses GPT-4. So there are a number of various tests, and if you want to read the technical report, just go to deepmind.google.com slash technology slash Gemini. But there are three models for Gemini. Ultra is still not released to the public yet. Pro is going to be the back end of Gemini, and Nano will be built for mobile devices. And so it proposes that it has capabilities like turning a video into coding a flocking simulation. We can get ideas for what to make with a given set of yarn it can read sheet music, and so much more. So let's go ahead and take a look at using the watered down version of Gemini. So because Gemini has the ability to take in user provided photos and analyze what's going on inside of them, I thought I'd try to push those capabilities to the limits by asking it to analyze a relatively complex infographic. So if you're curious, this is something I set up for my Matplotlib and Seaborn course for data visualization in Python. But overall, what's going on in this visualization is a report on the global coffee industry, specifically coffee production. And in this infographic, I focus on Brazil's market leadership status over time. So from about 1990 to about 2018, global coffee production increased by about 50%. And Brazil actually increased its share of the market from 29 to 37%. So within a growing market, Brazil is increasing its market share which means that it is a huge leader in this market. And so I have some donut charts showing Brazil's share expand from 29 to 37%. I have a line chart showing Brazil's production versus the rest of the world. In the bottom left, I have a bar chart showing total coffee production over this time period. And in the bottom right, I have market share with Brazil highlighted exploded out in a pie chart. So let's go ahead and see how well Gemini summarizes this, and then I'm going to push it a little bit further to see if it can code this by looking at this image. Let's go ahead and get started. Google Gemini now has the ability to take both speech as well as image uploads. And so I've uploaded the image you just saw, and I'm asking it with text, can you provide insights into the infographic shared here? So we're providing it a multimodal input. This is a more basic one than something like sheet music, sure, but it's still you know, taking text and then relating that to an image we're sharing. Let's go ahead and see what it returns. Okay, so this is a little bit strange response. Just for total clarity, I've run this demo a few times as I prepared for this video. And this time it says, sure, the infographic you sent me shows that Brazil is the world's leading coffee producer. Its share has grown from 29% to 37%, while global coffee production has increased by over 50% during the same time period. And just to be clear, you know, I wrote this in text, 
And so I intended this to be an infographic style. So, you know, Google is getting a lot out of the text that's embedded in this image as opposed to necessarily analyzing these charts. So let's continue to see how it does. The second paragraph says this infographic shows the total coffee production of Brazil and the world from 1992 to 2018, which is roughly correct. You know, it's missing that I think this actually starts in 1990, but I'm not going to blame that because this axis label is off. Uh, it's imprecise there. But what it says is that Brazil's production has doubled from more than 50 million to over 100 million. But if we take a look, you know, we can see that it's well below 50 million starting here. And by, you know, 2018, it's still not at this 100 million marker. Global production overall went from about 100 million to 150 million. So it's missing the mark in its description there, which is unfortunate. The other strange thing is that it uses Japanese here, which, and then it translates to Japanese, which is kind of cool, but also, you know, doesn't make any sense. Murray Tuwa, which means according to, or as you can see from the infographic. So it's teaching me Japanese. World coffee production has also more than doubled from around 50 million to 100 million. So it's giving me the exact same report for Brazil and the rest of the world, which is incorrect. And then it also says, while Brazil is the world's coffee producer, the infographic also shows the share of global coffee production for other countries, including Vietnam, Colombia, Indonesia, and Ethiopia. So it did assess my pie chart quite well, which is cool. Didn't do the line chart so well. Let's go ahead and ask it about the bar chart. And then it's telling me that it's not 100% sure, but it looks like it's coffee production by country. The x-axis would likely list the coffee producing countries. Okay, now it's just sort of theorizing which it's it's getting close which is cool but it's not directly getting that from the image so i would give this overall response like a c i think it captured the overall trends well which were embedded in text in other responses it has done a better job at digesting some of the visualizations but it is fairly inconsistent and so this is something that once we get a chance to access gemini ultra which is supposed to have even stronger capabilities and that, to be fair this is a relatively advanced task to see this continue to improve so one of the great things about this kind of tool though that we might not even be able to get from the data we're analyzing is we can start it off by giving it the context of coffee production in Brazil, but maybe we could ask it to provide us with more recent data. So can you tell me what Brazil's coffee production has been from 2019, which is where our data stops, to 2023, which is the last full year? and it even references that this infographic doesn't share past 2018, it can provide some insights. And it's giving me the most recent year. So the most recent year was 66.4 million. And again, it's embedding some Japanese, which is totally new. I haven't seen this before. It's also breaking down Arabica versus Robustica. So it's not giving me, you know, five years worth of data, but it is telling me the final year. And so if I was interested in analyzing this, we can see that, you know, Brazil stops at about 50, maybe a little bit over 50. And so if we were to continue this trend up to, you know, 2023, that's at 66 million. So we could presume that this trend has continued to move in a similar direction, which is some nice additional context that we can get by, you know, working with an AI like this, in addition to having our tabular data that we've already analyzed. And so the last thing I'm gonna ask for is just, can you provide code to reproduce the infographic I shared in Python. And let's see how this does here. And it says again, without directly seeing the infographic, maybe I'll just add the infographic back in and ask for code directly. It's saying it can't see it. So let's do report. Hello in Python. And it says, I don't have access to the image you sent, which is wrong. It's already analyzed images, but it is telling me it, it's gonna give me a data frame of fake data so we could switch these out. It has, you know, production in terms of millions of kg bags. These data actually looks better than what it, you know, initially summarized. And then it's also giving me the percentages of production in 2018. So it's missing the bar chart, but it is getting the pie chart data. Let's go ahead and just run this code all together. I'm not super confident this is going to work in one shot. LLMs rarely give me perfect code to start, but let's go ahead and try. All right, and so it's giving me a line chart of Brazil's share of the market. I'm not sure what this blue line is. And then it gave me a bar chart of, you know, share pr production, which would align with the pie chart. And so if I wanted to, I could say, 
can you make the line chart a stacked line chart and the bar chart a pie chart? And let's see one more time. So it's telling me the changes it made. So it's using a stack plot function, which is what I originally used, which is cool to see. And then it's using plot.py and telling me a parameter it used to convert these into percentages. So let's go ahead and take a look. And I need to get rid of the prompt, of course. And so again, this is fake data. It overall looks like it would be good and valid if I were to plug in my actual data into this code. And the pie chart here, looks accurate. It's not sorted the same way that I would sort it, and it's not exploded out. I, I and In the past, I have asked it to explode out the Brazil slice, and it did that with no challenge. So again, it's a great tool to use as a starting point for code, and you can continue to iterate if you have specific questions. I won't go through that whole process here, but again, I expect these capabilities to continue to get better. And while it is still missing the mark, that is a little bit comforting to know that I still have a place as an analyst and a Python specialist for at least a few more years. But I do expect these capabilities to get better and you should be keeping your eye on Google and not solely focused on ChatGPT because I do think Gemini and many experts are saying as well that Gemini might start to dominate or really be superior at code generation and technical tasks in particular. So anyways, that's a peek at Gemini as it is now. Continue to keep your eye out on this tool because it's going to continue to get better, but we'll go ahead and catch you in the next video.